This session is going to take you through the Unisix Mac Controllers exam and explain how it breaks down, how it's done, and what it involves. So a quick overview to start with. The exam is 12 hours long. So because it's this long, it's going to be split into multiple short sessions over the course of a week. The way it works is you're presented a brief to create a product. This is usually going to be a product that you have some awareness of. In the past, we've seen things like egg timers. It's been uh, potentially something a little bit more left field, like a roller coaster turnstile sensor. But they're generally something you can understand, something that you might have seen before in real life, even if they put a little bit of a different spin on it. There's 80 marks available in total in the exam. Generally, a pass mark is about 24 marks, a merit's about 40, and a distinction's around 64. It's also broken down into six different activities, which are quite distinct from each other. In this PowerPoint, I'll be going through the differences between the different activities. So, activity one. It says you should spend about an hour and a half on this activity. I tend to find it spends a little bit less time, but it is split up over the course of all of the other activities, and I'll tell you why that is in a second. To start a task, create a short project time plan or Gantt chart, and use it to monitor your progress throughout the rest of the task to make any adjustments as required. And hopefully you'll be able to spot the link to unit three here straight away. The difference is the Gantt chart is specified in this, whereas I believe in unit three it's not. The next bullet point is how it's split up across the others. During the other activities, activities two to five, you should also record in the activity one section of the electronic task book what you did that session, details of any issues encountered and the solutions discovered, and the action points for the next session. And there's a format you need to follow for this, and you'll see that in a later session. But what you'll do is at the end of every other session, you'll complete a review of how you did that session and what you're gonna be doing in the next session. And that's where most of the time for this section will be coming from. This is the only activity which is really split up over the course of the whole week. The rest are, you'll do activity two and then activity three and then four and then five and then six. Activity two, like I said earlier, you're given a client brief and this basically asks you to build a product and there'll be a lot of information about that product. This one says it's gonna take an hour and a half as well. By interpreting the client brief as operational requirements, prepare a technical specification for a user-friendly system that can handle some unexpected events. And again, there's a link here to the Unit 3 exam where you're asked to create a client brief for, uh, so you're asked to clear, create a specification for a client brief. Prepare a test plan and to check the functionality of the final solution against a technical specification and include some unexpected events. We'll talk about unexpected events a little bit later on. But what the idea of this is, is you're going to test your, you're going to create a test right at the start for your final design that's going to be used at the end. And that's actually used in activity five later on. But you're checking your original design against your specification by using the test plan. And what you have to do in this, you have to break the brief down into some bullet points of what the design needs to include and then make that test plan that we've just talked about. Unexpected events are things that can happen in the program that aren't really planned in. So it could be a power cut, it could be if somebody presses the wrong button at the wrong time, but you need to include these in your specification because they're needed for the highest marks in each section. They're mentioned a few times throughout the exam. Activity three is a system design. You're advised to spend no longer than two and a half hours on this activity. Prepare a user-friendly system design that can handle some unexpected events, including the selection and justification of suitable input and output devices. So you need to go through the different input and output devices that you could choose. And in a few weeks time, we'll probably look at this in a little bit more detail. A description of the system design covering input and output devices and microcontroller connections. Here, we'll talk about how you connect the different components to the microcontroller and how it's all connected up. That's quite a short section usually. Um, and actually it's often done at the end after you've built your system. And finally, a plan for the program structure detailing key system operations. So you'll come up with an overview of how the 
programs going to work, maybe a little flow chart or something like that, and you're going to be shown how everything that happens here. This activity is worth 16 marks, so it's a decent chunk of the whole paper. It's worth 20% of the whole thing, and it's about twice as much as the previous two sections. Activity four is when we actually start touching the programming software and the hardware. You're advised to spend no longer than two and a half hours on this activity. I think this is probably the one that you're most likely to go over on though, because you're gonna be developing the system, you're gonna be programming the microcontroller, and you're gonna be finding all the bugs that you would usually find when you're programming. Develop a user-friendly system that is well-organized, structured, and formatted, including producing the software program and annotating the code, the assembly of any hardware if required, so you need to put the hardware together, refining the system so that it operates as expected and can handle some unexpected events. Once completed, insert the annotated code into the electronic task booklet. The electronic task booklet is basically your answer booklet. It's all done on a computer, so the electronic task booklet is on the computer. So in this section, you program the microcontroller and you test that it works and you've got to include those unexpected events. So you've got to be able to program it so it handles those unexpected events. In a later video, I'll go through the best way to approach activity four and how you should look when you're building it up. Activity five, system testing and result analysis. If I spend no longer than an hour and a half on this activity, this one is for five marks. Test your system against your test plan from activity two and include some unexpected events. So you're just using that test plan from the start. Record the outcome of each test in the template provided. That's provided in the electronic task booklet. And finally, analyze the test results and evaluate your system for conformance against the client brief. The total for activity five is nine marks, like I just said. And you're looking at how your program compared to uh, the specification that you wrote early on and looking at how it worked overall. So you will use that test plan from activity two and then I would just write a couple of paragraphs of how it works overall. Maybe you didn't quite get the program finished and you can comment on that here, but it's just looking at how you did and making a bit of a review based on that. The final activity is another one which is two and a half hours, but this is a bit of an odd one. You produce an audio visual recording that demonstrates the system in operation, which should include your name, learner registration number, and center number at the start, a commentary explaining the operation of the user-friendly system and how its behavior is linked with your chosen hardware and the software program, and recorded evidence of the outcome from suitable tests, including some unexpected events. So the first bullet point is just to say who you are and where you, which college you go to. And this is because the exam board when they look at this and they'll be marking it, they'll need to know where, where the videos came from. You'll then need to talk through how your program works and why you went for the design decisions that you have and what it's doing at each point. It's not necessarily talking through what the program's doing, but you need to explain how it's going about doing that. Finally, you need recorded evidence that the outcome of suitable tests includes some unexpected events. So you just go through some of your uh, tests from your test plan and making sure you highlight that unexpected event one as well because that's how you get those top marks and this activity is 20 marks which is a quarter of the whole exam so it's really 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 important but really it's a summation of everything you've done so far and you need to show all the different things that you can do and that's it for the exam so in summary there's six distinct sections of the exam and they all are very distinct there's a lot of similarities to Unit 3 in the paperwork side of things, and you should be able to use some of the skills you developed for that unit in this. Although, of course, it's quite a different exam than Unit 3 in a lot of ways as well. And it's the only exam of the second year of the course. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your exam.